Now let us talk about Leontide paradox. So first of all, just ask yourself this question. What are the results of HO theorem empirically tested? Before then that, let's just revise what HO theorem was telling. India is a labor abundant nation. US is a capital abundant nation. US will be exporting the good which is going to use its abundant factor intensively. India is going to export the good which is going to use its abundant factor intensively. So India is going to use, I mean, for example, clothing and food. So if clothing is, cap is labor intensive and food is uh, capital intensive, then India would be, would be producing more labor intensive good, which is cloth. And uh, US will be exporting more capital intensive good, which is food, right? So the countries are going to export those goods, which is going to use its abundant factor intensive, right? So logically speaking, US should be actually exporting capital intensive good because it seems to be more capital abundant nation as compared to any other nation. And India should be, let's say, exporting labor intensive good because India is labor abundant. So if empirically also, if data is also going to show that, yes, this is the case, then we will agree that, yes, this theory holds, right? So the first part is yes. This was uh, empirically tested. And who, who, who tested this? Leontai. He tested this. He tested this. So after the empirical testing, what was the result which was which was reached? So Leon type in the year 1953, he actually used uh, input output tables in order to actually find out the pattern of the trade. And he said this, US being the capital intensive, uh, capital abundant nation should be exporting capital intensive good. Right. This is what HO theorem says. But what he found was when he used the data for 1947, the study was done in 1953, and he used the data for 1947 for US economy. He actually reached a paradoxical conclusion. Right, paradoxical conclusion, which is completely different from what uh, from what the uh, HO theorem was saying. US was actually exporting labor intensive good. Right. And US was importing capital intensive good. US was exporting labor intensive good. And US was importing capital intensive good. This shouldn't have been the case, no? This shouldn't have been the case. Why? Because US is a capital abundant nation. But even then, US is exporting the labor intensive good, and while it is importing capital intensive good, this is the paradox. HO theorem says what? US is a capital abundant nation, should be exporting capital intensive good, right? And importing labor intensive good. But here, the paradoxical situation is coming that in fact, US was exporting its factor which uh, in which it is not in which it was not abundant and it was importing a factor in which it is abundant that's it uh, so there was a certain criticism of this study also they said this you have used a 1947 data 
So what is the problem with 1947 data? The problem with 1947 data was that uh, world economy, global economy, other economies, they have not settled down after war. war world War II, I mean, it ended around 1945. So the economies, they have not settled yet. So it's not a very typical year, right? So maybe because of that, you are getting a paradoxical situation. This was the criticism against the paradox. This was what they said. He said, fine, let me do it once again. Let me do it once again. I think he did the second test in 1956. And he used 1951 data for US economy. Uh, and he used 1951 data for US economy. In this study also, I mean, he took some more number of uh, industries uh, all there. And what he found that was US imports were 6% more intensive than US exports. Hmm. And for this, uh, and in the first study, he found it was US imports were 30% more capital intensive, more capital intensive. So this is a paradox, no? US is importing more of capital intensive good than the labor intensive good. HO theorem says that it should be rather importing more of the, uh, it should be rather exporting more capital intensive good rather than the labor intensive good, right? So I hope I said it right. That HO theorem says this, that US should be exporting more of capital intensive good. But what is Leontai, what, what, what does Leontai paradox telling you? US is in fact importing capital intensive good. That's an idea. So how can you explain this paradox? So why in reality HO theorem was not holding, right? And what are the reasons which can explain this paradox? So one of the thing could be that US workers, US workers, so US it should be ideally importing labor intensive, but it is exporting labor intensive good. Maybe US workers were more efficient than foreign workers were more efficient than foreign workers. And US has a comparative advantage in knowledge, in skills, right, and in technology. So it is exporting such goods, which is going to require more knowledge, which is going to require skilled labor, right? So because of that, it seems as if it is exporting more of labor intensive goods. So it's basically, it is producing and it is exporting those goods which are going to use more of human capital as compared to the physical capital. That's an idea. So US has a comparative advantage in knowledge. technology, right? So it is exporting those goods which are going to require more of labor. I mean, which, are, which it is exporting those goods which are going to require more of skilled labor, right? So
it's a, it exported goods that were more skilled labor intensive and that were technology intensive. And that were technology intensive. Which required a higher ratio human capital to physical capital. Hmm? So the question arises, how does factor intensity reversal fits in here? Right? What do you mean by this? What is Heckscher-Rollin theorem is telling you? What is an assumption of Heckscher-Rollin theorem? There are two goods, two countries, and you have two different techniques of production, right? But the technique of production remains same in both the countries. Uh, that is, uh, this technique for each good, it remains same in both the countries. So if you take up an example of agriculture, right? US is a capital abundant country. It is going to use more of capital in agriculture. Right? You take up an example of agriculture in India. India is a labor abundant country. So India is going to use more of labor intensive technology in agriculture. If there is a commodity which is produced in a labor rich country by a labor intensive technology, and it is also produced in the capital rich country by the capital intensive technology, then the intensities are reversed. For example, agriculture in India is going to be labor intensive. While agriculture in uh, in US is going to be capital, right? So what I mean to say is this: so agriculture is labor intensive in India, and it is capital intensive in US. So supposedly, if US imports agricultural goods, so US is a capital intensive nation. And it is importing a capital intensive good. US, sorry, US is a capital abundant nation and it is importing capital intensive good because from the point of view of US, agriculture is capital intensive. Uh, so Leontive paradox occurs in US. Guys, from the point of view of US, agriculture is a capital intensive technology, capital intensive good. So if US is going to import agricultural good from India, it means that US is importing a capital intensive good. So Leontype paradox is going to occur in US. While if US exports agricultural good, if US is going to export agricultural good, so just think it from the point of view of India, So India is going to import agricultural good. So from the point of view of India, agriculture is labor intensive and it is importing labor intensive technology. So it means Leontive paradox occurs in India. No? Uh -huh. Leontive paradox occurs in India. So fact in the presence of factor intensity reversal, Leontype paradox occurs at least in one other country. Definitely. So you might just write one line. In the presence 
of factor intensity reversal. A leontide paradox occurs always in one of the country, right? Okay, so this is what I wanted to do in this recording. So what is it, that, what exactly we did? We defined what a leontide paradox is. We understood that. We talked about the two studies which leontide did, and he found out that the paradox was holding in US economy for in both the studies. And uh, he also explained, leontide himself explained what are the reasons why leontide paradox is there and what is the meaning of factor intensity reversal, right? Okay, thank you, Vita.